In this video, we're going to learn about ClickHouse's loop function. This function runs a query over a table or a function that returns a table infinitely or until you've reached the limit specified in the query. Let's launch the ClickHouse client and have a look at how it works. So we're gonna say, I wanna select star from, and then we'll call the loop function. And we're gonna use the numbers table function. And we're gonna say, go up to three. And then we're gonna put a limit in, so it's gonna stop when it gets to 10 results. And then we're gonna run that query. And you can see it runs very, very quickly. We've got zero, one, two, then another block, zero, one, two, then another block, zero, one, two, and then the last block is zero, because we've now reached 10 numbers. Now, if we delete the limit and run that query again, it now just goes infinitely 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, and so on, and we'll kill it. And you can see a few seconds have gone by and it's done that 60,000 rows worth of that. So that's kind of cool, but what's a real use for this? Let's have a look at some log files in an S3 bucket. So you can see I've got a bunch of different log files that are about 30 meg in size each. Let's have a look at one of those files. So you can see they've got log information. So you've got IP addresses, we've got date timestamps, we've got the actual URI that was called, the response code, and so on. So we're going to come back over to our client and we're going to create ourselves a logs queue table. It's just going to have one field. So it's going to be line and it's a string. And then we're going to use the S3 queue engine. We'll point it at our S3 bucket. This bucket is public, so we'll tell it no sign and we're gonna treat each row as line a string, and then we'll tell it that the mode is gonna be unordered, so we don't, we don't, these files are just randomly named, so we're gonna just keep a collection of them, and then we'll create that. Now we're gonna create a logs table where the data is gonna end up, so we'll pull out the IP, the date, the method, the URL, the status code, and the browser. This is gonna be a merge tree engine, and then finally, we're gonna create ourselves a materialized view called logs consumer that's gonna take the data from the queue into the logs table. So we'll say we're gonna have a CTE that reads from the logs queue. We're gonna use a function called pass log line to pass the line into parts. And then we'll read from that CTE, pulling out the IP, the date, the method, the URL, the status code, and the browser. And then we'll just do one little bit of filtering because sometimes we get rows that are incomplete. Don't worry if you don't understand all the code in and what we're doing here, we'll link to a video where we go through it more slowly at the end. Now we're gonna see how long is it gonna take for the data to get into that table. So we're gonna write another query, so select star, and we're gonna put a sleep in here. So we're gonna say sleep for three seconds before executing the query. We'll then say from loop, and we're gonna use the view function, which can which turns a subquery into a table. So we'll say from logs, select count stars, and put the timestamp as well. And then let's run the query. And you can see we sort of go through it. So it starts at zero, then we get up to 34,000, 327,000. And you can see it keeps on going up and up and up. And we'll speed this up a little bit. Uh, and we're expecting to get to just over 2.3 million. And you can see we eventually get there. And so this is quite a nice function if you don't wanna to have to create like a watch statement somewhere, kind of running a query over and over again. And as I mentioned earlier, if you wanna learn more about the way that the parsing of these log files is being done, check out this video next.